All right, so let's look at this limit, tangent of x divided by 20 over 2x minus pi. As we approach pi over 2, and this means we're coming in from the left side. Um, so if you try to actually put pi over 2 in place of x here and here, it'll say, you know, error on a calculator. So in this case, it's kind of nice to look at a graph to carefully analyze what is going on. Um, so I graphed tangent, so that's what this is over here. And here it's undefined at pi over 2. But as you approach pi over 2 from the left, the graph is going up to positive infinity. So while you can't actually plug pi over 2 in to get a value, in terms of what it would equal in a fraction, it's becoming infinite. In fact, positive infinity. If you do the same thing for the denominator, I graphed that function separately and I got something that looked like this. And here is a vertical asymptote, also at pi over 2. And the graph is going down towards negative infinity as we approach pi over 2 from the left. So the bottom is negative infinity. This is an indeterminate form because we have an infinity over infinity. And the negative here, you can think of as the whole fraction, is just going to be negative. Unfortunately, this is not defined. So this is not what the limit is equal to. However, we can use L'Hopital's rule when you have infinity over infinity. So what I will do is take the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left and start by differentiating the top and then the denominator. To take the derivative of the top, the derivative of tangent is secant squared of x. Now what about the derivative of the denominator? Uh, before I start taking the derivative of this, it itself is a quotient, so you could use the quotient rule, but I'm going to do a little bit of work off to the side. So the denominator, you know, it's 20 over 2x minus pi. I'm going to rewrite this so it's a little bit easier to take the derivative of. The denominator is to the first power, and you can move this entire denominator up to the numerator if you make this exponent a negative one. So that is... Now, I'm not taking the derivative yet. I'm just rewriting the denominator itself so it's easier to take its derivative. To differentiate the bottom, I'm not going to go to here, but I'm going to take the derivative of this thing. What I would do is bring the negative 1 down front, multiply it to the 20, copy down the inside. I would subtract 1 from the exponent, but then by the chain rule, I'm going to multiply by the derivative of what is inside the parentheses. So putting that all together, I bring down the negative 1. It gives me negative 20. I copy down the inside. I subtract 1 from the exponent. I'll extend my fraction a little bit here. By the chain rule, I have to multiply by the derivative of just the 2x minus pi. The derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of, of pi is 0. So I'll just put times 2. And it's kind of messy. I think I'll rewrite this where I'll multiply these numbers together and just kind of simplify this expression. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left. The numerator is secant squared of x, and the denominator is going to be negative 40, and then we have 2x minus pi to the negative 2. So to move forward, uh, the idea is maybe we can plug this number in place of x now, and if it simplifies to a number, that will be the answer. But I really don't like how this is written just because we have this negative exponent, and maybe we could rewrite uh, secant so it's in terms of cosine. So I'm actually going to simplify this a little bit more. This 2x uh, minus pi to the negative 2, I can move to the numerator if I make this a positive 2. And secant is 1 over cosine, so that's really 1 over cosine squared. That means we can put a cosine into the denominator. This negative 40 isn't going anywhere, so this is going to be my next step. We have the limit. As x approaches pi over 2 from the left, so the negative 40 stays in the denominator. The 2x minus pi will move to the numerator, and it is squared. And in the denominator, I'm going to put a cosine squared of x. And the reason for that was 
this is really 1 over cosine squared. So that cosine squared ends up in the denominator. Okay, so now if I put pi over 2 in place of the x's, well, the numerator is going to be 0 because this term becomes 0. And cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so your denominator is 0 as well. So this is another um, situation where we can't plug in the number, but we can use L'Hopital's rule again. So let's do that. I'm going to take this expression, I'm going to differentiate the numerator and the denominator, and see what that gives us. All right, so we get the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left. If I differentiate the numerator, I get 2 times 2x minus pi to the first, and then I multiply by 2 by the chain rule. In the denominator, I want to be a little bit careful here. When you have cosine squared, I mean, we're really saying we have cosine of x to the power of 2. So, you know, we'll bring down a 2, we'll copy down a cosine of x, and by the chain rule, we're going to multiply by the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. Putting that idea here, when we bring down the 2, it's going to multiply to the negative 40 to give us negative 80. We'll then have cosine of x to the first, but then we have to multiply by negative sine. And if we simplify this, this is the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left. And in the numerator, I can multiply the 2's together to get a 4. And then we have 2x minus pi, and that's to the first. In the denominator, we have a negative and a negative, so it's really a positive 80. So I'll just put 80. And uh, I'll write this as, well, it's really cosine times sine. I'm going to write that as sine of x times cosine of x. And here we can cancel that factor of 4. 4 goes into itself once, and it goes into 80 20 times. Uh, we don't need these parentheses anymore, and I'll copy this simplified form down on the uh, next slide. Long way to go for this one, and we're definitely getting there. So again, here we're at the situation where, like, all right, um, maybe we can put pi over 2 in place of x, and then we'll get a number, and that will be our answer. But yet again, unfortunately, if you put pi over 2 here, your numerator is 0. If you put pi over 2 in place of both of these x's, well, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and it makes the entire denominator 0. So yet again, we have another 0 over 0. And this could happen a lot of times, and it is in this problem. But that means we have to apply L'Hopital's rule yet again. So this is the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left. When we differentiate the numerator, all right, it's like finally great, we get 2. And if you want to take the derivative of the denominator, well, now we have a product of two functions, so we got to be careful. we got to use the product rule. So to differentiate the denominator, my product will be, well, let the first term be 20 sine x, and I'll let the second term be cosine of x. So to differentiate just the denominator, so to differentiate this entire denominator, I first take the derivative of 20 sine x, and that gives us 20 cosine x, and the product rule says you leave the second thing alone. But we have to continue. We then add on. Well, now we leave the first thing alone, which is 20 sine x, and we multiply by the derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x. Some more simplifying to do. All right, in the numerator, we have 2. Here, we have 20 times cosine times cosine, and I'm going to write this as 20 cosine squared of x. Now, I'll really subtract 20. That's not what I wanted. All right, there we go. I'll subtract 20 sine squared x. I'm noticing that there is a factor of 2 that can be canceled between the numerator and the denominator. So if I cancel this 2, these both become tens, and we have the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left of 1 divided by cosine squared x, 10 cosine squared x, minus 10 sine squared x. 
we can't use L'Hopital's rule anymore because, well, in the numerator, um, it's not going to be zero. In fact, it's always equal to one. So we're at the stage where we finally can take pi over two and put it in place of all of the x's to get our answer. If you put pi over two in place of cosine, this whole term becomes zero. Sine of pi over two is one. So if you square that, it is still one. So when you plug pi over two in place of all the x's, nothing happens to the numerator. That first term in the denominator is zero, and then you're gonna subtract 10. Again, the reason for this was cosine of pi over two is zero. So squaring zero is zero. This whole term is zero. Then we have minus pi over two in place of sine is one. Squaring one leaves this whole term as one. Therefore, we have just a 10 here. And of course, we would probably write this as negative one over 10. And that is the final answer for this problem.